One of the most useful skills you should learn when using the Lightning Flow Builder in Salesforce is how to debug the logic that you've built in your complicated and yet well thought out flow. In this short tutorial, I'll show you how to do that. Welcome to Ship the Force. When you're testing a flow that you're building out or troubleshooting a flow that fails, you should know how to debug it directly in your flow builder. The debug option that we're going to be going over today in the flow builder can really be your best friend. In this example, we're going to take a look at and debug a flow we created in a previous video. This is a screen flow that is creating a project record and linking it to the project resource records associated to an opportunity. Before we get started, if you're unfamiliar with the nuances of lightning flows, or if you want to learn more about this flow itself, you'll want to go back and watch my lightning flows tutorial video on the ship to force channel first. So if you're still here, let's get started. We're going to take a look at our debug tool in the upper right hand corner of our flow. You may be asking what the difference between run and debug is. Run and debug are extremely similar, but debug has one benefit that makes it win over run, which is in debug mode, you're able to enter values for the flow's input variables and then display debug details while running the flow, which is going to allow you to see how the flow actually processes the data throughout. We'll see that here in a second, but run just basically runs the most recent saved version of the flow that you have open. Uh, it is useful, but it's worth noting that Salesforce recommends that unless you need to test how your flow works in the classic runtime, you should always, always, always use debug to test out your flows because unlike the run tool, debug always uses the lightning runtime, which we want. When we open up our debug tool, we have a couple of options to define. First off, run the latest version of each flow called by subflow elements. This isn't going to matter for us because we're not calling any subflows from our flow, but if you were, then you should leave this selected unless you are intentionally testing inactive subflows that you've built out. Next, we have show details of what's executed and render flow in Lightning Runtime. We're gonna to wanna to keep this checked so that we can see the details while we're stepping through the flow itself. Here's where the debug tool really shines. We need to enter our first input variable. In this case, we're going to enter an opportunities record ID so that the flow knows which opportunity it should reference throughout, as well as its related data. So in this case, I'm going to just toggle to one of my test opportunities I've created, copy the system ID from the URL, and then enter it into our record ID variable. When this component's live, the flow is automatically gonna grab this ID for us, but because we're manually testing this out, we need to tell the flow what ID to use. Okay, let's go ahead and run the flow. When we click on run, Salesforce kicks off a flow interview. A flow interview is simply an instance of a flow. And remember, depending on the values we enter throughout the flow, each instance or interview of the flow can be different. And that's why you're typically going to be testing multiple use cases for each flow. Now that we've started our flow interview, we're going to see our flow's first screen that we've defined. And on the right, we're going to see the debug details of the flow. As we click through the flow, our debug details on the right will show us information on how the flow is processing the data throughout. Since our flow depends on input from the user, specifically expected length in months and the start date of the project, we're going to go ahead and enter in those values. These values should end up populating our newly created project record at the end of the flow. The third variable here is create tasks for project resources. This checkbox is going to branch our flow into two. One path that creates task records for the resources and one branch that doesn't create task records for our resources. This is a good example of an instance where you'd want to come back to the step in the flow and test both paths. Before we click next, let's take a look at our debug details. We can see that we have details on how the interview was actually started, including the user that started the flow interview and the input variable that I entered in. 
The next thing we see is that our flow triggered a get records action. This queried our opportunity record and returned any records where the record ID equals the ID that I entered in. And that step I also defined to store the owner ID field value for that opportunity as well. So it's storing the ID and the owner ID of the opportunity for us to use later in the flow. And then we can see that the result is that the flow interview successfully found records. That's great. Let's go ahead and click next. All right. When we click next, we're presented with another screen on the left hand side here. This is the success message that the user will see when they've successfully run the flow on their page. In the debug details section, a lot has happened. After we clicked next on our previous screen, the interview ran through quite a few steps. Each step the interview ran through was recorded for us to review. This may seem like a lot, but really when it comes to the ability to debug processes and logic, the more detail you have, the better. Let's take a look at these details. After our flow interview found the opportunity and we input our values for the new project we wanted to create, we can see that the project record is created and the project's record ID is stored in a project ID variable. Then we can see that there's another get records action taking place that's looking for the project resources that are associated to the opportunity used in the interview. Next, we're looping through those project resources to assign the resources to the newly created project record and to store each of the resources emails in an email collection that we're using later in the flow to send emails to these resources. Once the interview is finished with the assignment, we're still in the loop and now a decision needs to be made on whether or not the flow interview should create tasks or not. In this case, because we left the checkbox true, a new task is created for this resource. And notice that we have two loops here. This is because we're running through this loop twice because we have two project resources associated to this opportunity. So for each item that we have in our collection, in this case, it's a project resource collection, we're going to see that item run through the loop to make sure that the flow is processing the data correctly. With that, as we can see in our details here, we now exit the loop. The project resource records are updated based on the assignment we performed earlier, and then the resources are each sent an email, which if I actually go to my email, you can see I did receive. If we run this again really quickly, I just wanna show you how we would test the separate branch that we have for this flow. In this case, I am going to uncheck the box to create tasks and I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. And in this case, we can see that the decision came out differently. In this case, the create tasks for project resources variable is equal to false. So the loop is not creating tasks for these project resources. Perfect. One important warning that I do want to give is that running through this actually does perform its actions in your database. So records do actually get created and updated in Salesforce. That's why it's so important that while you're building and testing these flows, you do it in a sandbox and not in your production environment. Also remember that just closing or restarting a running flow doesn't roll back its actions. So be careful with that. Before we sign off, I wanna quickly show you what it looks like if we run into an error during our flow. So let's go back and instead of entering an opportunity record ID into our variable, let's just leave that blank and see what happens. Remember, this flow depends on an opportunity being referenced, so really no logic throughout the flow should complete successfully. Okay, we do see our screen because that's not dependent on a record ID, but let's go ahead and click next. All right, now we can see we have a blocker issue. And on the right hand side, it's telling us that the flow interview failed to find records in our database, which makes sense since we didn't give the flow a record ID. And just like debugging anything else within Salesforce, each error is going to be different depending on the flow that you've built out. So it will take some detective work, but using the tool here should give you enough detail to get to the bottom and troubleshoot any issues you're facing within your flow. Okay, so if we go back and change our inputs and enter our opportunity ID again, and then click next, it should work fine. Yep, there we go. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions for me, you can email me at shiptheforce at gmail.com or leave a comment in one of the videos. If you liked this video, please subscribe to my channel to see more content. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been Ship the Force.